Economics President. Thank you. Uh, so, indeed, uh, uh, this uh, work uh, is uh, dedicated to, on one hand, uh, uh, numerical evaluation of behavior of dissimilar single lab joints. Uh, uh, it was done in uh, cooperation. Uh, we have uh, to outline first that uh, we have used uh, both uh, cohesive zone modeling and the extended finite element modeling. But on the other hand, we did also some experimental work by using the digital image correlation. Um, I'm going to explain uh, what kind of single lab configurations and materials we have used. The discussion on uh, using uh, both uh, cohesive modeling and uh, SFAM is going to be done. Uh, some explanation of the experimental method and comparison of the numerical and experimental results and uh, some conclusions. So just uh, very briefly, as uh, an introduction, everybody knows uh, about cohesive zone modeling. Um, in uh, our work, uh, we are going to use, as you are going to see, a linear softening low, the low for the cohesive zone modeling. Uh, it is uh, uh, quite, uh, let's say, efficient uh, for small-scale bridging conditions. Uh, it is, uh, let's say, uh, advisable to be used. We have done some uh, work before and we were quite happy on using uh, this law. Uh, of course, the limitation everybody knows, you need to have cohesive elements at the interface where the crack will grow. On the other hand, the extended finite element uh, modeling is uh, used uh, nowadays more and more. You can have uh, crack propagation uh, anywhere in the model you consider. Uh, we have used abacus for modeling. So this means that uh, damage initiation, uh, uh, strength or strain uh, criteria being of maximum value have been used. And on the other hand, experimentally, there were many studies which uh, have used the DIC as uh, studying what happens uh, in the adhesive uh, layer, uh, of course, evaluating the influence of different uh, parameters. Now, talking about our single lab configurations and materials, uh, this is the geometry we have used. Um, we, uh, for experimental purposes, we wanted to control the um, uh, <coughs> thickness of the adhesive layer, and uh, this was always 0.5 millimeters. Uh, the overlap length uh, was considered uh, as being 20 millimeters, and this gap was coming out of 5 millimeters by uh, using some uh, special dentistry wax, which was put there to control the thickness of the adhesive. In uh, our uh, uh, numerical simulations and uh, tests, we have used uh, Aerodite 2015 uh, with some mechanical uh, properties as uh, suggested in a work done at uh, Porto University. And uh, our adherence where on one hand aluminum 6656 is going to be main aluminum and unidirectional carbon fiber of 200 uh, grams per meter square, the epoxy resin, adherence having a width of uh, uh, thickness, let's say, better of 3 and 5 millimeters, and the width uh, was always considered as being uh, 30 millimeters. So, as I was uh, mentioning, these uh, properties, mechanical properties of the aerodite of aluminium, uh, was uh, well, let's say, taken from the literature. Uh, we have done also experimental testing to see a little bit uh, which are the uh, um, the Young's modulus, Poisson's ratio, so we did uh, uh, testing on uh, traction machine at a speed of one millimeter per minute. We have uh, established on bulk uh, specimens uh, of aerodite longitudinal modulus, so this value from the literature was a little bit corrected by uh, doing our tests. Poisson's ratio, and for the carbon adherence of uh, 3 and 5 millimeter thickness, we have done also our own tests, and uh, 
obtain the, the elastic constants. Now, talking about uh, finite element modeling, we had uh, two steps in the analysis. So, on one hand, we had uh, pure cohesive zone modeling, and this is what is presented here. Uh, one layer of uh, adhesive uh, having uh, cohesive elements 0.5 by 0.5 millimeter. And uh, these were here presented as being the 3 millimeter thickness adherence. Uh, uh, and uh, the um, steps of uh, initiation of damage, which means in the first cohesive uh, element uh, was considered initiation, and then the uh, propagation. Um, our, uh, let's say, uh, next uh, step uh, or parallel step in the modeling was done by using in the same time XM and cohesive zone. So this means that now we have considered, in a, let's say, um, trying to obtain a, quite a similar model. We have considered a thickness of a adhesive uh, layer of one millimeter. We have induced some initial delaminations in the middle. Uh, this just to, for the purpose of having some uh, starter for the initiation of the propagation of the crack. Uh, so, uh, in our case, uh, this was the model we have uh, used. The zero thickness cohesive elements were imposed here at the surface. So. It was a combination in between using XFAM and cohesive zone modeling. Uh, some previous work uh, done by other people have shown that if you are using only XFAM, you may uh, get uh, into a following problem. So you'll have the crack propagating, let's say, in the adhesive and then getting into the adherent without remaining uh, in the interface, let's say. So in order to avoid this problem, we have used cohesive zone modeling of zero thickness at the interface in between the adhesive and the other. As uh, uh, important, let's say, moments in the force displacement curve, uh, this is uh, numerically obtained. We have uh, initiation of damage as being this point one. Propagation uh, by the XFAM uh, through the adhesive and uh, going towards the interface of uh, this uh, crack, and then finally failure at the interface due to the delamination. Uh, in the moment of damage initiation, uh, this is just uh, there are two pictures of uh, peeling stress and shearing stress from the initial. Uh, the lamination which was symmetrically placed on uh, both sides. Now talking about uh, digital image correlation, this is uh, a typical specimen we have used. So once again, these are these five millimeters at the edges, which were used to control the thickness of the adhesive. Uh, and we had uh, different combinations of uh, materials, so this means aluminium, aluminium, aluminium carbon and carbon carbon of thickness, two thicknesses of three and five millimeters, so there were six uh, geometrical, let's say, configurations, and uh, we have uh, used the uh, digital image correlation to look closer at what happens in the adhesive layer, uh, and here I need to explain a little bit this picture, because uh, this would be the overlap length of 20 millimeters. We have emulated some, let's say, virtual strain gauges, three on each side of the overlap, and measured locally what would be the picking displacement and the shearing displacement, which was in fact measured over a 50 millimeter gauge length, which was kind of covering the overlap region. So uh, uh, we had, uh, we have obtained uh, this uh, higher value of uh, local peeling displacement in this uh, bottom uh, gauge. This is in fact the last frame uh, before the failure of this uh, specimen. So we have reached here a maximum strain in this area of about 9%. Uh, 
uh, from the point of view of displacement, once again, uh, here would be the maximum value of 0.07 millimeters, and in uh, the upper strain gauges, the uh, vertical displacement uh, was about the same at 0.6. So uh, the previous case was for aluminum aluminum uh, configuration. What I'm showing here is uh, the situation in which we have uh, uh, this time aluminum and uh, carbon. Uh, these are in fact, this is a map of a shearing stress variation. What we can see is the waving of the shearing strains along the adhesive layer. Uh, so we have here some local phenomena uh, of uh, debonding because we have seen uh, debonding in this uh, uh, situation and of course uh, bending of uh, 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 especially the carbon adherent. Um, uh, on the other hand, and this has to be noticed, uh, we have obtained, uh, we have seen in our experiments, uh, the pullout of the carbon fibers uh, and the uh, interlaminar failure, which was additional to the cohesive failure of the adhesive. Yeah. Uh, this was, of course, uh, a problem. Now, from the point of view of comparison, here we have the curves which uh, are for aluminum carbon and aluminum carbon uh, uh, tests. Uh, these are global displacements as measured through the testing machine. What I want to emphasize, however, it is that uh, from the point of view of local displacements and local phenomena, things look uh, quite differently. What we see in this figure is numerical simulation, so both methods, cohesive zone and combined, and these are experimentally obtained curves. This would be for aluminum carbon of 5 millimeters, uh, much smaller displacements uh, uh, up to failure, uh, let's say shearing displacements. And in the case of carbon carbon, we have uh, data which uh, are more spread up. Uh, Due to this additional put out of the fibers, uh, the strength uh, is uh, uh, a little bit diminished, uh, and of course, uh, um, we have also um, to emphasize that numerical mo model predict a much higher strength and stiffness. As conclusions, we have to underline that uh, uh, we wanted to concentrate on this dissimilar aluminum carbon joints and carbon carbon joints, uh, experimental evidence showed us that it is very important to look at local shearing and peeling deformations. And once again, for the carbon carbon single lab joints, we have both strength and stiffness diminished due to this additional interlaminar damage, uh, which compromises the integrity. We have to acknowledge the support of the project. Thank you for your attention.